Hey, what's up my Uplifting Life partners? This is Ron Simplified Myers. And for those of you that this is your first time hearing me, I wanna say welcome and thank you for the support. I'm the author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, my objective, my intent, is to simplify relationships and life. And so this is gonna be more on the life side, which finances does affect relationships also but we're going to go into the relationship side. I've been in the, I was in the financial service industry for about 30 years. So I know a little something, something about what's going on in that industry. But anyway, so today I wanted to talk about the topic, the significance of life insurance. My wife and I, and I'll go through and explain uh, this in more detail, but my wife and I, this story will really bring it all together is she passed away five years ago, for those of you who don't know my story. And at the time, she was bringing home $4,500 a month in disability. Now, it's one thing when I called the companies up to let her know, you know, I figured there was some spousal um, program where, you know, you'll get a portion. I know it wouldn't be the $4,500, but it would be something. Folks, the moment I called them, boom, everything stopped. Now, think about that. If you had $4,500 a month stop in your house immediately with no warning, no nothing, what do you do? For some people, they end up on the street. We don't want to talk about that in our society because we want to make it sound like everybody on the street that's homeless is either on drugs or they're mentally disturbed. No, there are people out there for many different reasons. That could have been one of them. I could have been one of those statistics if we didn't have the life insurance. That's why I tell you the significance of life insurance. The purpose of it is to make sure that income that I lost immediately doesn't devastate me financially because one, I'm not concerned about the burial for my wife. So that was never a concern. It's like, okay, whatever we want to do, paid for then I'm going to have money in also to make sure that I can move forward because it's one thing to lose somebody from a financial perspective. It's another thing now when you're sitting there, I mean, and I meant to say when you lose them from an uh, uh, emotional perspective, which means physically she's not in my life. That's enough in itself. And then most people have to turn around and now deal with the financial. And in this particular instance, because of the life insurance, that was not a concern. So you could really deal with What's most important is the fact that you're losing a loved one. In this case, I was losing my wife and she was also my best friend. So I'm losing both of them and I don't have to focus on a money thing. I get to focus on dealing with, you know, myself and then those around me helping them through that process. You got to see why that's important to have because the last thing you want to do and see is, and we see it too often, where people on the streets with signs doing car washes or asking for donations by the freeways, putting themselves in danger, uh, sitting there in front of traffic, just trying to get donations so that they could take care of someone's burial. That's not a position you should believe in, you should leave anyone in. And as a parent, you gotta make sure you have it in place where if, if you lost your child, because it does happen, that you're not devastated. And that is the purpose, the significance of having life insurance in place. So let me cover one of the things that we teach, which is called the theory of decreasing responsibilities. Now in the early years, couples, for example, have a lot of responsibility. You got the kids, you got daycare, you got school, you got college, you got credit cards, you got a mortgage, uh, you got to take care of food. I mean, show, you, know, you name it. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. You got a lot of responsibilities, but in, in the early years, what is it that you normally don't have? Money. No dollars, but you got all these responsibilities. So it's back to what I was talking about, the example I used with me and Terry. Now, if something happens to the breadwinner, what do you do at that point? Because, see, I don't get into the gender things that the society keeps wanting. The man, he's the provider and protector. It's another video I have out. You guys can watch that. But um, I don't get caught up in all that. It comes down to making sure that the income that's coming into the home wherever it's coming from, that if that source stops for whatever reason, financially, we're going to be okay. Does that make sense? Again, it's back to like what I said. 
It's enough for us to have to go through dealing with the loss of a loved one. It's a second uh, challenge if now we have to instantly turn our focus to what are we going to do to eat, to, to, to pay bills, to do. That's not a position you should ever leave those that are dependent on you in that position. And then the flip side of that, like I said, with parents, make sure that you're not in a position where if something happens to your child, because I've heard financial planners tell people, well, you don't need to worry about covering your kids. Bad information. It's like I said before, you want to say, if something were to happen to my kid, because it does happen again, am I in a position that I could write the check for whatever we, it is we're going to decide to do, however we're going to handle it, and it not bother me financially? Because see, folks, if you say I got $15,000 sitting in the bank and I could pay for a burial if I needed to, but that's all you have, you're not in position. You, it, what I'm saying is this is not something you say if it happens, yeah, I got some money set aside, but now I'm devastated. Now you just put yourself in a bad position because now you're going to turn around and be back into the financial situation we we're talking about where now you're saying, I don't have no money and you're starting from scratch. That's the significance of life insurance is to make sure that we could take care of that and the family can still move forward. Does that make sense? So again, the theory of decreasing responsibility says in the early years, we have a lot of responsibilities. So we want to make sure the family is taken care of if something happens to the breadwinners. That's the purpose of life insurance. But the need for that insurance will start to decrease. You got to notice I'm doing this. It's going down. Why? Because all the things that you were responsible for, like, you know, taking care of your kids, they're grown now. They're taking care of themselves. The mortgage is either paid off or we're getting close to paying it off. So we may not need as much because we don't owe as much on the house. We're paying off our credit cards. You see, it's, it's all the things we, the responsibilities in the early years are starting to disappear. Also, while we're younger, we want to start saving and putting money aside in investments and that type of stuff, stuff that makes us money so that the money starts to grow. You guys notice it's going up while your responsibilities are going down because what you're doing is you want to replace the insurance with cash. See, remember we said before, the reason you got the insurance is because you didn't have cash. Now we want to grow over the years to have cash so that we don't need insurance. Does that make sense? Now, of course, there, there are financial planners, life insurance agents going to say, well, don't listen to that because you need life insurance forever. Yeah, because they get paid. There are people who have wealth, financial, tons of money, wealthy people that buy life insurance for a state tax purposes. That's a whole nother story. They want to make sure if I'm leaving my family millions that the government is not going to take a big portion of that. So they'll buy life insurance to offset what would end up being taxes on their estate and let the insurance pay that for them. That way the family gets to keep all the money. Does that make sense? But the majority of people will never, ever get to that issue where they have that much money that they're sitting here talking about, I need to, to take care of estate taxes. So that plan of where people are saying you need insurance forever, it's, it's by the agents and it's by the insurance companies. So, but anyway, I'll get into all that kind of stuff later in my, in my videos, but I just wanted in this one to talk about the significance, understanding, make sure you take care of your family so that they can move forward. And if you're single, like in my case, I'm single. I still have a ton of insurance on myself. Not that I have to, because I could have just enough for burial purposes, and then I would be taking care of my responsibility because I'm not leaving my passing as a burden to anyone. But I have a lot of insurance. And the reason for that is I want to make sure my family, when the time comes, not only can take care of the burial, but I'm going to leave something behind for them to be able to throw a party if they choose to or travel or pay off some bills or do whatever. I know, again, you don't have to do that. That's, that's, that's a choice. That's what I'm choosing to do. The only thing I feel you have to do is make sure you don't leave the burden of your passing on someone else. The other stuff, leaving them enough where they can pay off their house, which I'm doing, uh, <laughs> that stuff is a choice. You follow me? Understand the significance of life insurance. Don't let an agent convince you you need it forever. It's like telling a person that doesn't have a car they need car insurance. No, I don't. Not if I, not if I don't have a car. Same thing with life insurance. When I accumulate the cash, 
I don't need the insurance, so it's not something I need for my entire life. Estate tax purposes, different conversation. Wealthy do it. Most people will not get to that point. So, again, I hope I'm very clear on the significance. If you don't have it, get it. Make sure you don't leave your family in a, in a position where they will be devastated and they have to go to the street. I had someone tell me that when I was in the industry. Um, they were telling me, they're like, man, look at my wife. She's beautiful. Man, she's going to be okay. And I just kind of looked at them and I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed. So you don't, you're, you don't have a problem with your wife just marrying anyone to make sure she's taken care of because you don't want to make sure she's taken care of. See, folks, you got to understand, and especially for some of you guys, you can't be dead and jealous. You can't sit there, well, I want to leave all this money behind, and, and then she's going to go out and get her a new man. And you ain't here. There's a difference she's going to get a new man and you here. You're not here. You should be ecstatic at the fact that you leave your wife in a position and your family in a position where they're not worried financially. And then she doesn't have to just pick a guy. She may decide she don't want to get married again. She may decide she's cool being by herself or whatever. Or she may bring in a guy later. But she's not in a rush because financially she's taken care of. And folks, as you guys know, I don't play the gender role. That holds true both sides. I'm not one of those, what well, a man, he'll figure it out. No. If you're bringing major bread in the house as the wife, or you may be the major bread winner, you need to make sure your husband is taken care of and the kids are taken care of. There's people that I see today that are buying homes together. They're just dating still. And, 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 that, and folks, I'm not here to tell That's on you. Some people really believe marriage is the same as living together. Obviously spoken by those who have never been married. But if you, and I got videos on that too, <laughs> if you want to say, uh, I don't buy all that. But from a responsibility perspective, if you get into a home with someone and we bought a home together, you need to make sure you have insurance in place to make sure that that person doesn't lose the home if something happens to you. You don't want them to instantly have to turn around and get rid of the home because they lost you physically. You guys follow me? Now, some people may hesitate when they hear me say that and be like, I ain't buying no insurance on her. She may take me out. Then why are you with her? I used to have, I used to have a, uh, like a million dollars on me when, when Terry and I was together. And people would say, man, she going to kill you. I was like, that means I'm with the wrong woman. If I'm worried about her killing me for a million dollars, I'm with the wrong woman. And if you're worried about your partner talking about, I, I'm not worried about her, you know, shoot. That's telling me how you guys really feel about each other, even though you're claiming it's the same as marriage. Hmm. Think about it. So bottom line is, if there's anyone for any reason that's dependent on your income, that is the significance. You want to make sure if you're dependent on my income... If something happens to me, I got to make sure you can move forward without me from a financial perspective. That is the significance. Same thing if I'm single. I got to make sure that I don't leave my burden of passing away on someone else. I have to make sure that's taken care of. Now, as a single person, just to get clarity on that, as a single person, if you have money set aside that will cover your burial, then you don't need life insurance because that's the major thing you need to make sure that you're taken care of is you don't want to leave that financial burden on people. And if you have that in cash, voila, you're good. You don't need it. But don't let agents sit here and try to convince you when or when you don't need it. Because all you got to do is understand this philosophy and it makes it very clear. Because agents will try to get you to, to believe you need it forever from the day you're born to the, till the day you die. Even if you're 100 years old that you need life insurance. Not true. So, um, what was I getting to? Anyway. I hope, <laughs> I hope that's pretty clear. Uh, make sure if you don't have it, you get it. To make sure you get the right one, that will be my next video. I will talk to you about the difference between term life insurance and cash value insurance, uh, which is called whole life, universal life, variable life, you bet your life, whatever other life they want to add to it. Bottom line is the term versus cash value. You guys, once I explain it, I'll simplify it in a way that you'll understand life insurance probably more than 95, 99%. And, and I know that sounds high. It's real. 
Most agents have no idea how this stuff really works. They're sharing with you what their company taught them, what makes them the most money, what makes the company the most money, not what's best for you. Folks, what I did before I ever got in the industry, I researched the industry, found out what was going on, and that's why I got involved with the company that I did, because I realized it's dirty what's going on in the financial service industry. Watch more of my videos and you'll get to see, you'll get some clarity, you'll understand this stuff without letting the foxes teach you what makes them the most money, which means they're setting you up to be eaten alive. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. If you haven't had the opportunity to watch my video, run over to Ron's U channel. That's the letter U, Ron's U channel.com. Subscribe to the website. Share these videos with others. Um, I definitely enjoy doing videos. Love you to help me spread the word so that we can help people uh, get their lives in order, simplify their lives in addition. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Make sure you make sure your family is taken care of.